the center of the uh, magnetic board, you will find a degree scale. Of course, we have our unknown mass. And finally, we have a set of masses for which we are going to use defined or known values of mass. How are we going to set up the experiment? First, Hello. you have to know how to open the mass. Today we are going to and over the pulleys you will find a string that passes through or over the pulley. At each end of the string, you will find mass hangers. In the center of the uh, magnetic board, you will find a degree scale. Of course, we have our unknown mass. And finally, we have a set of masses for which we are going to use defined or known values of mass. How are we going to set up the experiment? First, you have to know how to open the mass container or the box for the masses. Pinch or press at this part of the box and lift the cover. Next, if you have a digital balance in the lab, use the digital balance to measure the real or the true value of this object's mass and record it in your data sheet here. Next, you take known values of masses and you are going to use it to balance the unknown mass in our system. Here's how you do it. I recommend a value of 75 grams for each of the masses or mass hangers. That would be 50 gram mass plus 20 gram mass plus the hanger itself is actually equal to 5 gram. Combine them together and that's 75 grams. Hold this in place because if you let it go, this will fall. What you do is you take the other 70 gram mass and hang it in the opposite side of your board. There you go. You have to make sure that the string is passing over the pulley and not behind it. Okay. Once that is done, make sure that these masses are not because they will cause you errors in your reading. Next. Take the unknown mass and make sure you already recorded the value according to your digital balance. If the digital balance or the triple beam balance is not available, you can also ask your teacher for some assistance. Once you hang the unknown mass in the middle, make sure that it's not touching the table. If it is, you can take the string and tie it so it will be shorter. Let all three objects hang freely. What happens here is now, each object has a mass, that's your mass one, mass two, and unknown mass, and multiplied by gravity, each of these mass becomes weight. The direction of the weight is, of course, downwards. Mass one is downward, that's the force of the weight. Mass two, direction with the gravity is downwards, and the unknown mass, with gravity has a weight that is also downwards. But if you notice, none of these three objects are falling. That's because the total sum of all the forces or all the weight is actually equal to zero. That is what we call an object or a set of objects that are in equilibrium. The total forces, weight of one plus weight of two, plus the unknown weight is equal to zero. And that's how we will find the value of the unknown weight. The three methods we are going to use are by graphing, mathematical equation, and using an analytical equation. So let's begin. First, you have to record the values of mass one and mass two. And because we are talking about vectors, we will record them as tension. What is tension? That's the force that's being applied on a string. Remember that a string connects all the three masses together and that mass one with gravity, that's weight number one, applies a tension on the string here in the direction 
downward. But because the string goes over the pulley, uh, the direction for tension of mass one is actually changed. So instead of downwards, it becomes at an angle. The same is true for mass two with gravity becomes weight two, and that weight pulls the string, giving it tension. The direction of tension number two from the center is going up at this angle. And finally, we are sure that the tension for the unknown weight is actually downward because it is simply in the direction of gravity. In order to measure the tension, we will simply take what we call the mass weight value of each masses. If this is 75 gram weight, that will be the value of T1, 75. If this is 75 gram weight as a mass weight, that would be equal to 75 as T2. Finally, we need to measure the angles of T1 and T2 and record it in our lab manual or data sheet here. In order to measure the angle correctly, you have to make sure that the string, the center of the string where the three objects are attached, is in the center of the degree scale. So how do you do that? You can move the degree scale across the board, but make sure that the center of the string here is in the center of the degree scale. So place the degree scale gently behind the string. Another thing that you need to measure is actually, or to make sure, is actually the string of the unknown mass. It must be straight down. And what angle is that? 270 degrees. So you have to rotate your degree scale to make sure that string number three for the unknown mass is at 270 degrees. The best way to do it is by standing in front of the board and looking at it straight or directly. There you go. Now that we are sure about the angles or the positioning of our degree scale, we can read the angle theta 1 and theta 2. There you go. Sorry, I mute my microphone. Okay, let's go back. From this video, we need to take T1 and T2, theta 1 and theta 2, okay? And we will record it in the lab manual, the data sheet, which is this one. I told you that T1 and T2 is equivalent to 75 and 75, sa? My question for you is, what is theta 1 and theta 2 from here? Who can give me theta 1? Shabab. Theta 1? Hello? 140? Which one is theta 1? Theta 1, okay. 140 is there, yes, but is it theta 1? Let me show you something, okay. I will use blue. Is a measure of the angle from 0. This is 0, okay. So theta 1 is actually the angle of T1. That's T1. So what's the angle here? Anyone? 46. Is it 46 or 45? You have to measure it clearly. Okay? So let's see. If this is 40, this is 45. One line after 45 is, of course, theta 1, 46 degrees. Clear? What about theta 2? Also from 0. We measure theta 2 from 0. 
which is this line here. So how much is theta 2 as an accurate measurement? Show up. Come on, guys. Theta 2? 138. So this is 130. This is 135. 136, 137, 138. That's correct. Thank you for your response. Let's minimize this one. Let's go to the data sheet. And this is the same data that you will write in your book. Is that clear? What's the first angle? 41. What's the second angle? 138. Is that clear, Shabba? From our measurement, for, ah, 46. I'm sorry, 46. Yes. So let's erase this one and change it. 46 and 138. There you go. Okay? That's how we will fill the information. Now we will use three methods to find the resultant or the unknown mass. What are those three methods? Well, the first method is called the graphical method. So the graphical method makes use of the tail to tip method or head to tail method of making or finding the resultant of a graph. You have two vectors, for example, V1 and V2, okay? If you combine them, you will put it on paper in the same length as well as direction of V1, vector 1. And then at the head or the tip of V1, you will continue with V2 with the same direction and length of V2. And then to get the total, you will take from the beginning, starting position of V1, and then connect to the final position of V2, that's the resultant VR, okay? That's the resultant VR. That's the head to tail method. If we look at our graph, okay? Mm, let's go from the first page. Anyway, I think it's here. No, it's not here. Ah, it's here. There you go. If you look at our graph or our scale, or simply let's use this image, okay? What's gonna happen is this. Let me erase all these lines to make it clear for everybody. We will graph T1 and T2, they are side by side, okay? Where's my pen? There you go. Side by side, let me use blue. T1 is here, T2 is here, we will take T2 and transfer it to the edge of T1, like this. And from there, we will combine to get the resultant, which is the unknown mass. So our graph will look like this. This will be T1, this will be T2, and this will be the unknown mass, the resultant, okay? Now, you will see this method in the video. If we continue the video, okay, you will see me. Uh, oh, no, I didn't put it in the video. I did it in a Blackboard recording. So what I'm going to do, Shabab, is to take my camera. I took a paper, graph paper, can you see? And I will take my camera and place it in a position so that everybody will see how I make the graph, okay? So I will stop the recording. Do I have or do you have uh, my video in full screen? Can you see me as a whole? I'm yes, talking yes. about my camera. Okay, yes, good. Uh, teacher. So I am taking my camera now. I will place it on my tripod, okay? Uh, Reid, you cannot see? Yeah, we can see it, teacher. Okay. I want to see if you, can, if you can see the drawing clearly, okay? This is very important because, just one second. Well, I, I will use to have two, I used to have two cameras, but it's not HD. I prefer to work with HD. Will it reach my table? It's not too high. Don't worry, because my camera can do zooming very well. Oh, you see my microphone now. Move the mic. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will zoom in. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, we are all in the first day. And you know, when we are in the first day, it is normal to see. Oh, wait. I have a higher tripod. I'm sorry. Just be patient with me, Shabab. Now you see my... Take your time, teacher. It's okay. Uh, I want to give you 
a very efficient test shot. Well, I'll go to Jarir and buy a second camera <laughs> <laughs> just for this purpose. Okay, let's see this one. Because what's the other problem? If you can see the image, is it in the right orientation or is it upside down? You know, that's another problem. So let's see. If I put the camera. It seems here, that you don't have a stand, teacher. A good stand. No, no. I have a stand. So? But I have a stand, but it's too short, you know? Marcus, what are you doing there? My son is watching me. He wants to learn <laughs> physics. Okay, you can see the paper now, right? Yeah. Now I will try to zoom in. And position it in the center. Yeah, uh, zooming in is too much. And here's my paper. There you go. So actually, I'm using a Logitech camera. There. How's that? Now it's clear. OK, but it's a little bit upside down. You see, if I make a straight line with the pencil pointing down, it's pointing up. So I will reverse it so you can see. Uh, one second. Camera, camera. Uh, where's the advanced setting? Horizontally, vertically flip. There you go. So if I make a line going down, yes. Is that clear now? Horizontal line, vertical line. No, all clear now. Okay. So here's what we will do, Shabab. You can see my camera clearly. I want to. I want you to see how I will make a record. First, we know that T1. Okay, and T2 is equal to 75 gram, 75 gram. My question, is the number left to right correct or is it flipped? Can you flip it? it? Okay, I want to know if it is flipped, okay? What about now? Now it's... Uh, now it's yeah. correct. Okay, good. But can you uh, write with the uh, ink pen? That's the, the ink? Pencil. Yes, the pencil is not clear. No. Uh huh. Okay, here's what I will do. I will try to write bigger. I have okay. another paper. Okay, nice. Okay, so T1 is equal to 75 gram. How is that? Good, good. Now it's good. Okay, T2 is 75 gram. But the problem here is that. You have a mastara, which is this one here. Our mastara doesn't have gram. In fact, it has only inches and millimeter and centi. Yes. So we have, we have to change our 75 gram into centimeter. So if we say 75 gram is actually changed into 75 centimeter, the next problem is that we will need a paper that will fit 75 centi. And 75 centi is almost one meter. Instead, we will use what we call a scale. So when we say a scale, what does it mean? For every 10 gram, we will convert it into one centimeter. That means 75 divided by 10 equals 7.5 centi is that clear how we will scale our gram Shabab? yes yes so t1 and t2 will become 75 become 7.5 centi and then we have to measure which we did in the video theta 1 and theta 2 so theta 1 is 46 degrees and theta 2 One is 138 okay 138 degrees from these measurements we are going to make a graph okay so how do we make a graph the first thing that you must do is at the bottom of the page on the downside make a horizontal line okay so you have guys you have to make this graph and you will submit it with your report okay and then in the middle of this horizontal line you will make a vertical line these two lines are the x and the y axis. So this is the x axis where you have zero degrees, 
This is the y-axis, which you have at the top 90 degrees and at the bottom 270 degrees. Okay? Now, don't worry. The number is small. That's not important right now. Now, what do you have to do next? Let me see if my camera can come, can zoom in much closer. I'm talking about the clarity, okay? I want it to be more clear. Well, I have a table which is very short. I'll try to zoom out because even I'm not happy with the, uh, what do you call this one? How clear it's coming. Okay. Because like this, it will be much more or much better. Mm -hmm. I need a bigger table, honestly speaking. There you go. Look down, look down. Okay. I think this one is a little bit much clearer. Okay. Yeah, it's come much on, better. Come on. Come on. Because the light. I have an idea about the lighting. I'm using, well, I'm using three lights. Let me try and put my light down. I have a ring light. And my kids are messing with me while I'm teaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I need the camera to zoom to focus. Come on, camera, focus. Uh, yes, the question in Arabic. Unfortunately, I cannot read it. Because I want you to see how to make the uh, graph, uh -huh. honestly. Okay? I want you to see. Normally, we will teach this one. And when we are teaching it, we are like teaching it hands on. Okay. It's not focusing well. No, no, now it's focusing. Now, now it's, it's focused. Nice. Excellent. Okay. So what do you do? We take, oh, come on, don't autofocus. <laughs> Let me try again. Let me see if it will focus again and then lock it. Come on, camera, come on. There. Okay. Now it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm doing manual focus. How's that? Oh, nice. Now it's okay. clear, sir. Huh? Yeah. So yes. what do we do? Uh, Shabab, if you have questions, please, uh, you can speak. What you do is you take a degree scale. So this is a degree scale. Okay? You will place the x-axis at the horizontal of your degree scale and the y-axis of the graph at the 90 degrees of your degree scale. So this is the 90 degrees with the y-axis. The x-axis with the zero here is on the horizontal. And then we will identify from the degree scale our two angles. What's the first one? 40, 46. Six. So this is 10, 20. I'm starting from zero. 10, okay. 20, 30, 40. And then six. count six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's my 46. You see the point okay, which I nice. put there? Okay. The next angle is 138. Eight. So this is 90, 100. 110, 20, 130 here. 138 is here at this point. So I will write 138. There you go. So you can see I put this point here at the tip of my pencil. That's 138. From your side, maybe you cannot see the angle clearly. But from my side, because I'm looking directly from the top, it's 138. Okay? I will remove my degree scale from 0. Okay, I know that this is the angle of T1 and this is the angle of T2. The next thing we need to do is to draw the line from zero up to this angle. Maybe we can go more or we have to go less, but the line must be 7.5 centi. Because remember, it was 75 gram divided by 10 becomes 7.5 centi. Okay, 75 gram for T2 divided by 10, 7.5 centi. So what do we do? We take our mastera, our ruler, the zero of your ruler from the point of origin, because that's the zero of this graph, but the edge must go to the angle 46 degrees, angle one, like this. And where should we draw the line? From zero, we should draw 7.5 centi. Hadi, Kamsa, this is five, six, seven, 
7.5 is here, okay? So let me just bring it down a little bit so you will see. 7.5 centi, and we must follow the angle that is provided. So from zero, 7.5 centi up to here. Is that clear? That's the line which is equal to T1, One. with the angle. Is that clear, Shabab? Yes, clear. Okay, we draw an angle bracket here and say theta one. What's the next? We have to put theta two on the opposite side. Now, remember you have to do exactly the same graph and you will submit next week, okay? So how do we make theta two here? If I do this, you will not see the scale, so I will use this scale, okay? Now it's upside down, but the ruler will work in the same way. Zero from the point of origin, 7.5 with the angle of T2. Okay, so let me draw the line. Uh, teacher. Yes. Uh, do you Go want ahead. us to draw the graph by freehand or by word? No, you have to use Mastara. A freehand, yeah. Yeah, freehand. Freehand drawing, not computerized, okay? Oh, okay. It has to be by hand. Nice. And this exam, unfortunately, I cannot do much, but this exam will, will maybe 99% appear in the final exam, and you have to do the same graph in the final exam. So it's better you practice now, okay? Nice, so nice, where okay. is angle 2? Angle 1 is 46 degrees. Angle 2 from point of origin, uh, from, sorry, from x-axis, this is angle 2, 138 degrees, and this is T2. So as you can see, I'm putting labels on my graph to identify. Now here's the technique. To find the result of T1, T1, uh, let me write it here, plus T2, to find the result of T1 plus T2 by graph, you have to take T1, like the pencil here, and place it at the end of T2. So you have to move it like this, okay? You have to move it like this. But the problem is the line is there. We cannot move the line physically. Instead, we can make another line which is exactly equal to T2. Did you get it? Shabab? Can you did you get what I mean? Up? Can you repeat? To get T1 okay. plus T2, mm -hmm. you have to take T1 here, and then you have to take T2 and move it at the end of T1, like pencil. You see this pencil? Okay. Imagine this pencil is T2. It's a line. In, it's a line, okay? okay? To take T1 plus T2 here, you have to move T2 at the end of T1 like this. Uncalculated. You have to move the line. So the best way to move the line is to use the same angle of T2 from here, from the end of T1. But there is another technique which I am showing you, okay? Because I have another ruler. Uh, one second, I'm trying to find it. Okay. This technique is used in drafting. If you have technical drawing, this technique is actually excellent for technical drawing. How do you move T2 to the end of T1 here? How do you take this line and move it on this side, okay? First, take a mastera, which is straight. So this one here. Place it this mastera below T1, and then take your degree scale. This is my degree scale, okay? Remember that my degree scale has a 90 degree line, this vertical line. You take your T2 and your 90 degree line together, like this. Can you see that? Mustaqim, can you see them together? This is my T2 now, sa? Okay, again. This is my T2. I will take the 90 degree line from my degree scale and place it on my T2, like this. Clear? Clear. Okay. I will take my second mastara and place it at the bottom of my, what is this? My first degree scale. Mm -hmm. And what should I do? I will slide. I will slide it forward so that I'm taking T2 at the end of T1. Again, I will repeat the technique so you will see it, okay? okay. First, 
take your I wish I have another degree scale. This one has so many scales you cannot see the drawing behind it. Mm, I was hoping I have one here, but maybe I forget after one whole semester. Nah, unfortunately, no. We have to use this one then. So again, I will take this degree scale, okay? okay. And the 90 degree line, I will place it with my T2. I'll put it down so you can see T2. Okay. Can you see the line of T2 here? And the line of my degree scale here? Clear? Clear. I will take my second mastara and match it at the bottom here. That means they must be together, fixed. Mm -hmm. Next, when I slide my degree scale, it's like taking T2 and then sliding it. Okay? Because nice. it's matching T2. So when I slide, see what happens. This is the line. I will continue to slide it. It will reach the end of T1. To the point. To the point of T1. From there, let me bring this back so you can see it in the camera. From there, I will identify the 90, this line. OK, okay. I'll put a okay. point. Can you see that point? Yes. What's What's the purpose of this? When I remove, it's like taking the angle of T2 and placing it at this point. Uh -huh. Did you see the technique? Yes. Now, how do I finish this technique? It's easy. I will take my mastara. I will again measure 7.5 centi following the same angle. OK? And from there, show up. I will draw a line. There you go. So now I have T2 here is the same as T2 prime there. My graph will actually, um, how do I push it? From the top, it will actually look like this. Can you see that? Can you see that? So actually T2 here is exactly the same as T2 here clear clear okay now let's continue how do we find this time the resultant the unknown mass remember our equation t1 plus t2 plus the number that we are looking for um, the unknown, unknown mass. mass the object is equal to zero so, huh? yes it's it's simply like this zero Point of origin, T1 plus T2 equals zero. So you simply close the line like this, and then measure how long is this line. From here, I can read for you, it's equal to 10.5 centi. That's the resultant, 10.5 centimeter. T1 plus T2 plus R equals, what's the number at the point of origin here? Zero. Zero. That's how we find the value of an unknown mass using a graphical method. Is that clear? Yeah. I will send you, Shabab, in Blackboard or in Telegram. I will give you the Telegram link later. I will send you this image, this actual picture that I made myself. I will send it to you so you can use it as a guide. Is that clear? Clear. OK, but please do not submit. Wallah, I have only one student, Abdullah Aziz. I will give him full marks and the rest <laughs> maybe you. six out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Is the you. graphical method clear or do you have any questions? If you have questions, tell me now. Uh, teacher, wow. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, now you take the value of R by centimeter yes. you do want to change it to the gram or keep exactly it like this. that's the next step but okay. i will show it to you in the table okay i'll okay, show it nice. to you in the lab manual not here okay right clear clear okay there is another measurement that you need which is the angle between t1 here and the angle between t1 and r this angle is called alpha so how do you measure the angle alpha let me show you simply like this 
And you will use the same uh, the same number, okay? The angle alpha is equal to from this point. You can see this is 40, this is 50, so this is 40. Voila, it's 45.5 degrees, okay? So I write it 45.5 degrees. That's the angle alpha. Again, again. Again, I, okay. You measure the angle from T1 up to R here. Not Y axis, up to R. That's your alpha. Okay? Place your degree scale with zero horizontal at T1. And from there, you measure the angle here. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40. This is 45. Oh, my mistake. It's 46. 46 degrees. Okay? Maybe even 47. I'm not sure. But 46, to be sure. So 46 degrees. That's the angle between T1 and the resultant. Okay? Any questions? Uh, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, take from any place the alpha? Nope, not from any place. Oh, I'm upside from down. The, from the middle or from where? Okay. Alpha is taken from T1. Okay, yeah, I know T1, but uh, I know, but from any uh, place in the line of T1? Yeah, yeah, because oh, it's there a straight is a specific line. line uh, a specific yeah, it's a place. straight line. It's a straight line. So from anywhere in T1 up to anywhere in radio, in resultant, it's a straight line. So the angle will remain the same. Like, for example, from here to here, same answer. It will still be 46 degrees, okay? Oh, okay, nice. Okay, now let's reset our camera because I'm upside down. <laughs> flip, flip, there you go. And maybe move it up and autofocus. You see the camera has a trick. If it's on autofocus, I look more handsome. There you go. <laughs> now, let's continue by going into our uh, lab manual, okay? Where's the lab manual? There it is. Now let's fill the information in the lab manual according to the graph. Uh, as I said, I will send you the graph so it will be easy for you. Okay, let me just scroll down. This part here, oh wait, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing? No, I'm not. Let me share. No, teacher. Share screen number two and there you go. So this part here of, whoa. My blackboard become crazy. One second, let me just see. There. Can you see the screen now, Shabab? Can you see the screen? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so now you know how this is equal to 7.5 and this is 7.5. I explained it to you. That's because we use a scale of 10 for every 10 gram, one centi. What about the unknown force here? How do you put the value? In the uh, lab, multiply, multiply seven. No, 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 no. In the lab, this is by balance, digital balance. Okay, you have to use a digital balance. So I cannot show you now the real value, but we will see it at the end. Now the result of the graph goes to the next page. This is the graphical method page. Okay, of the report. How long is the graph that we did? Ten point five centi. You have to bring it back to gram weight. So instead of divide by 10, you multiply by 10. Therefore, this is 105 gram weight. What about the angle alpha as measured? 46 degrees. So that's how you feel. Method number one. Clear? Is that clear? Yes, clear, teacher. Okay, yes. good. Let's, let's continue. The 10.5 is R, teacher. That's right. Again? The 10.5 is R. Yes, the value of R, the R is resultant. 10.5. Okay. Here, if you want to see it again, um, I don't know if it's clear this time because my, graph, my image is now small. It's there. 10.5 centi. Oh, okay. That's in centi. Because we have a scaling from table one, remember that we have this scale. Mm -hmm. You have to bring it back from centi, bring it back to gram. gram. That's why we multiply it by 10, 10 to make it 105. Okay? Yes. 
Okay, good. Mathematical method, Shabab, is actually easier because it takes little time. Remember that we have a value in the table. I will not go back to the table because we can memorize it anyway. We have a value of T1, 75 gram. T2 is 75 gram weight or gram. And we know that theta 1 is 46 degrees and theta 2 is 138 degrees. Huh? If you doubt, there it is. Okay? This is the value that you will use to substitute here. However, there is one value which is not available in the table. What's that? The value of theta. Therefore, you have to find the value of theta in this equation first. So how do we do that? First, we take theta 2, 138, minus theta 1, 46. Give me the answer. You must have your calculator with you. Well, I have my calculator with me. Give me the answer, Shabab. I'm waiting. Anyone with the answer? 92. Okay, 92. That's how I want you to participate, everybody, okay? Uh, believe me, online teaching is good because we have all technology, but nothing will replace participation, okay? You still have to participate if it's online or in GIC. And this is the only way you will learn, trust me. Because by participation, you are yani, active in class, you are going to have the experience even if we are online, okay? So 92. When this appears in the final exam, whoever calculated 92 here, I'm sure they will never forget it in the final exam. Let's continue. That's what you will substitute as your cosine theta. So let's substitute the value, big square root, 75 square. Oh, my handwriting is now bad. 75 square plus 75 square plus quantity two multiply 75 multiply 75 cosine 92. Who can give me the answer? Go ahead. I will calculate two. Give me the answer. Plus quantity. 2 multiply 75, multiply 75, cosine 92, and I have the answer. Anyone has the answer too? I'm working on it. Okay, go ahead. Oh, be careful. Hmm, my answer is strange. Oh, I'm in radians. Make sure your calculator in degree. Shabab, do you know how to change your calculator from radian to degree? Teacher, I have answer. Okay, you can type your answer. Uh, read your calculator in degree, in radian. You have to change it to degree. Uh, 10.4. Uh, no, you, did you use 75 or 7.5? 7.5. It should be 75. Oh, okay. Because you are not making graph anymore, therefore, you should use the real value 70, 75. Read, check your calculator. It's in, it's in radians. It has to be in degree. I have an answer. Who else has an answer? Just multiply your answer to 10. It's the same. Yalla. I'm waiting.
Uh -huh. Mohammed, you have a question. Did you make a group? Yes, there will be a group. I will give you at the end. Uh, okay. Teacher, the answer is... Uh, yes. 100.90. So 0 0.20. So we write here 104.20. Or 198 or 0.20. Yeah. Final answer with two decimal places is acceptable. Okay. Okay. Anyone else got the same result? Maybe it's a good time to check the attendance now. So let me call you by name. You have to answer by chatting or by saying present in your microphone. Seven double six. Nawaf. Seven double six. Nawaf. Yes, took sir. Good. Two eight nine. Ali. 289 Ali 289 Ali 323 Muhammad 323 Muhammad yes. yes 289 again 289 Ali 323 Muhammad and 323 also okay 323 is present what about 289 Ali Yes, I am present, but but I have a problem with the connection. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, uh, seven double five, Abdul Aziz. Yes. Excellent. Nine four one, Abdul Aziz Arani. Nine four one, Abdul Aziz. Okay, not here. Three two three, Musa. Musa. Musa yes. Jafar Jawad. Yes, here. There you go. Shabab, you should know the sequence. Get ready, okay? Wake up, don't sleep. Zero one two Ahmed. Ahmed Al Dosari. There you go. Zero double three Abdullah. Excellent. One zero one Mustafa. Mustafa, I can see you here. Mustafa, are you sleeping? Ah. 117 Osama. Yes. Okay, Osama is ready. His microphone is already open. 895, read. Yes, yes, teacher. Excellent. Triple zero, Karar Al Sulaiman. Excellent. 076, Muhammad. Good. That's good. 290, Fahad. Yes, here, teacher. Good. 703, Rayan. Rayan. Okay, I can see you unmute your mic, but I cannot hear you. So you're present. And 123, Hamad. 123, Hamad. Hamad left the session. Oh my God, did you see that? Maybe his signal is bad. We will give him some chance to come back. Yalla. So the mathematical method, Shabab, Kalas. This is the mathematical method. This. Only this. Clear? Yeah, it's easy, teacher. Is that clear? It's, it's easy. very easy and you can do it in two minutes. All you have to remember is you will use the value of T1 and T2, not the centimeter value. You will use T1 and T2, not Maybe the centimeter. Okay? Let's go to uh, alpha. Teacher. How do you get the alpha if we are going to find the angle between T1 and T2? The same thing. Substitute the value in this equation. Do you have to memorize the equation? No. In the final exam, we will give you all this equation. Clear? So let's calculate alpha. This is arc tangent. You know how to use arc tangent in your calculator? Yes. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. OK, good. Bracket. What is T2? 75 sine we know that theta is 92 degrees divide this one second divide this by 75 plus 75 cosine 92 give me the angle we know from the graph let's go back to the graph first we know that it's 46 degrees by graph now we will verify it by calculation yalla calculate give me the answer I'll calculate too.
Done. Okay, great. That's correct. It's also you, the others. You can still send your answer. Okay, it's also forty-six degrees. It's also forty-six degrees. It's actually. Um, let's go back. Oh, I cannot go back in my calculator. It's the tangent of one point something. Okay, so it's also forty-six degrees. As you can see, Shaba. 104.2 46 degrees let us look at the graph 105 46 degrees so the two methods are actually very similar yes or no hello yeah it's similar teacher they have similar results similar results so the method is only different but the answer is almost always exactly the same okay maybe the graph there is a small difference, why? Because the accuracy by the thickness of the pencil or by the degree scale, voila, it's very difficult to demonstrate in while holding the camera, okay? <laughs> now, what about the third method, analytical? Because we are teaching online, we will not ask you to complete number three, okay? In okay. short, we will skip this one, clear? Clear. This but one is not included. It not included in the report, okay? Okay, teacher. Yes? In the exam, uh, can we choose uh, one of these uh, three uh, methods? Or... No. In the exam, you will use method one and method two at both of them. Okay, both. What, what I teach you now will be in the exam, okay? Okay, nice. It's easy, trust me. If you, well, I, if you ask me, I get this in the final exam, five minutes, I'm done, okay? Yeah, it's easy, but the graph will take Yeah, time. the graph will take time. Okay, now let me explain to you the last part of your lab report here. Hey, boys. My boys are making noise. <laughs> In the last part of the lab report, you have to make a summary of the results. Okay, I want to show you the... One second. I have... Uh, I have an important email that came up. The summary of the result, we didn't do method three, okay? So you can cancel this one. What is the F determine? This is the same as resultant R. We know that it's 105 gram weight. And what's the alpha? 46. What about by method two? This is the mathematical method. We have 104.2 and the angle alpha is also 46 as simple as this only this is that clear yes sure. yes, yes only yes. this okay that's how you will summarize it now i want to show you also um one second because there's an email that i will discuss with you at the end before you leave okay i i want you to stay with me uh, once we finish, I have to discuss this with you. Oh. I will send it to you. And from there, you have to reply to this email or this message. Okay? okay. It's a declaration. Declaration form? Uh, declaration form. Did you receive it? The I declaration received, form? Uh, for another course. For another Today. course? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I will do you it. have do to it. send. One second, I'm trying to open it. You have to send the same declaration form with me. Okay. Uh, one second. Uh, this one, oh, where did it go? Because I'm using three monitors to see everybody. <laughs> this one, did you get this form? Uh, this one, Shabab, did you get this form? Yes, yes. Okay, if you got this form, then it's fine. You have to just simply send it to me. If not, I will send it also in Blackboard for everybody. And then again, you have to send it to me. What's the difference? The course code and the title and the section number has to be there for physics. And I will help you fill it up later, OK? okay. Uh, this came just now, so I have to send it to you. So anyway, let's continue. Percentage error. In the percentage error, you have to tell, you have to know what is F real. Now, I will tell you what is F real. 
if you take the mass, which mass are we talking about? From the beginning, it's this mass that is hanging in the center. Here, this one, the yellow one, okay? This one we know 75, this one we know 75, but this, we don't know the value. The only way is put it in the balance. The real value of this is actually 106 gram, okay? 106 gram. So in the book, F real, you see there, uh, let me put the highlight. F real is actually equal to 106 grams, okay? That is useful in the percentage error. Percentage error determines how accurate the method is. So you will write it here, absolute value, 106 gram minus, by graph, how did you, or how much did you calculate by graph? 105, absolute, divide by, again, F real, 106, multiply by 100%. How much is the percentage error for graph? What about for the second method? By mathematical equation, okay? Again, real value, 106, minus, we know it's 104.20 according to calculation. So, divide by 106, multiply 100%. What's the result? Again, this one is not in the final exam, so we can skip it. So, what do we do next? After calculating percentage error, it's time to discuss the source of error. Why is the source of error important? In any experiment, you cannot have always a perfect result. How do you find 106? 106 is found by using a digital balance. You take the mass and you place it on the balance. And from the balance, you will know it's 106 gram. Okay? But because we don't have it here, voila, how? There is online. Then I'm telling you it's 106 gram. Okay? Yes. Can you go up, please? Again? Go up? Okay. What's the question? I uh, just I write. Ah, you just want to take a screenshot for your report. Fine. But but you have to write the answer here. I will not show you the answer. Okay. Now can I go down? It's time to discuss the source of error and the precaution. And I will type here the source of error, but I will not give it to you to copy, but I'm giving it to you so you will understand. Okay? Number one. In any experiment where there is objects that are touching, the source of error is always friction, okay? In this case, the friction is in the pulleys. The friction is in the pulleys. How do I know? Well, I know. Look at the image here. Where is the friction? Hina. Between the citrine, the pulley, and the axle of the pulley, there is always friction. And this is the reason why if you notice the center of this, uh, let me watch. If you notice the center of the string here, okay, is not always in the center. Why? Because the friction will prevent the string from going exactly in the center all the time. Okay? That's why you have to adjust your degree scale. So, what is the cause of this error? The friction in the system. What's the next source of error? Okay, so the next source of error, let's go back to our sources of error. What did we tell you about the position of the string? Number one, the string for the unknown mass must be at 270 degrees. Number two, the string must be in the center, here. Okay, it must be in the center. Middle. Yes? Okay. What is this chat? This is what's up? Ah, Ahmed, were you not there in the introduction? You can make your own WhatsApp group, but I will not join you. Instead, I will make a Telegram group, okay? Okay. WhatsApp is not safe. Did you know that? They will give all your information to Facebook. No, but no, there's updates. They say that it will be so secure and safely. What did they say? They say it's now better. 
They will not share uh-huh. with uh, your okay. information. Maybe there's update. I didn't have the time to check it. But anyway, let's focus on the report first. Okay. What's the second one? The string. Telegram is much better. Trust me. Yes, Mohammed, you're correct. It's much more safe for everybody. The string of Efril. What does it mean, Efril? The unknown mass is not at 270 degrees. It must be at 270 degrees. Okay. And finally, what's the third source of error? What's the third source of error? You can say that M1 and M2. What's M1 and M2? Mass. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Mass 1 and mass 2, okay, okay is 75 grams, 75 grams, huh? Okay. Are you sure? We cannot be 100% sure because we didn't take the mass using a balance. So you can say M1 and M2 are not exactly 75 grams. That's a source of error. I can tell you another source of error, okay? The stream does not meet at the center of the degree scale. What do we mean by that? Again, in the video, it's look not here. In the it's not in the center. That's why we have to adjust it in the center. Okay? Mm. That's the source of error. What does it mean, precaution? Precaution means you fix the error. Okay, so let's type the precaution. Number one, it says there's friction in the pulley. Can you remove friction? You cannot. You can reduce it. So reduce the friction by putting oil, lubricant. What else? The string of f real is not at 270. Make it at 270. Make sure that f real is at 270 degrees. Okay, M1 and M2 are not exactly 75 grams. Okay. Make sure that M1 and M2 are accurate. What else? The string does not meet at the center of the degree scale. The string must be at the center of the, the degree scale. There is another source of error. I mentioned it in the video. Look at the beginning, okay? In the beginning, I want you to see the string of M1 and M2, okay? Look here. The string of M1 at the pulley. The string of M2 behind the pulley. So it's not actually using the pulley. It's just hanging, okay? So how can you write it as a source of error? You can write. There are so many source of error and precaution that you can write, okay? Um, let's go to the typewriter and go here to modify it. What's the source of error there? This is now one, two, three, four. This is now number five. The string is not on the pulley. Okay, that's the source of error. What's the precaution if I must fix it? The string must be on oh, the pulley. And this happens in the exam. You know, some students, they finish the graph, and then I point at the pulley like this. Look, it's not on the string. That means the angles will not be accurate. Okay. Any questions about this experiment? It's very easy. That's the, main it, thing you have to do, the main thing you have to do is to make your graph and also to do your calculations and complete the report. Now, uh, how do you teacher. complete the report? Okay, yes, go ahead. Uh, submit it on Blackboard or bring it to so, the next uh, You will submit class. the paper to me next week. Bring it. Okay? okay. You must fill the objectives here. How? Copy. Where's the objective? It's up here. Copy and write it by hand. Apparatus, the same thing. What about the theory? Okay? Because this is your first report and it's online, I want to help you. What is the theory and how do you get it? The theory means you have to write the rules. What are the rules? Let me show you. Number one, this is the rule for the first condition of equilibrium. It must be in the theory. The sum of all forces in X, Y, and Z equals zero. How do you explain this rule? Just write, this is the first condition of equilibrium. What else is a theory? Number two, this is another theory here, okay? Oof. Mathematic. Let me just circle, 
Okay? This one is another theory. You must write it in the book. Okay? What else is a theory? To find alpha. There. You must write it in the report. Sorry. And you must say, what is T? Tension. What is theta? Angle. What is R? Real mass. Okay? What about this one? You can skip this. Okay? Uh -huh. So that's what you need to write in the report here in the theory. That's how you will get full marks. Any questions? No, thank you, teacher. Okay, we still have enough time. Uh, don't leave. <laughs> I will send to you no, in I'll chat. Stay. I will send to you in chat the Telegram link which I did for your section, yeah. section forty-seven. Yes. How can I make uh, my calculator by degree? Okay, I have my calculator with you. Let me show you. You see my calculator here. Okay, at the top, you will see D or R, whichever is the, the system that you must use. In order to make it a uh, degree from radian, you will press shift, shift, and then you will press setup or mode. And then you will get a list, uh, degree, gradients, scientific, radian. Just use the number, can you see there? The number says dig. DEG, that means degree. Okay? okay? So in this case, three. I must press the number three, and my calculator will be in degree. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? Let me check those who are not able to respond. Maybe they will respond now in the attendance. I don't want anyone absent. 941, Abdulaziz. Mojud? Abdulaziz, 941. Yeah. Yes, 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 I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, Mustafa, 101. Mustafa. Yes. Okay, I checked the attendance. Mustafa, you were not able to answer. Careful next time, okay? Hamad, 123, Hamad. Yes. Excellent. What happened to you earlier? Disconnect? Yes, teacher. I have connected. Okay, please find a better internet connection. Internet in Saudi Arabia is one of the best in the in the world. Did you know that? Okay, okay. okay. everybody is present. Congratulations. Now, let's go to the telegram, okay? Your section is section number 47. I will copy the link. Now, if you want to have a WhatsApp group, this is for you, okay? Let me stop the recording. This is not included in the recording anyway. Stop.